Good evening and welcome to another edition of Film Nut. I am your host, Jeff Schubert. Glad you can join us. Well, actually, it's not just another evening. It is officially, very close to officially, the three-year anniversary of Film Nut. So we are going into year four right now. Very excited about that. Congratulations to you, Brian Grammo. Looking forward to another year of work with you, sir. And congratulations to you too, Jeff Schubert. Thank you very much. For those of you who might be tuning in for the first time, we are the show that likes to talk about the making, marketing, and distribution of film, TV, and yes, of course, new media, which we are a proud part of. So let's get to it. My guest tonight, Drew Baldwin, is the founder of the International Academy of Web Television and the executive producer of the Streamy Awards. Year one winners of the Streamies include The Guild, Neil Patrick Harris, Rosario Dawson, and Paul Rudd, just to name some. In addition to, in addition to that, Baldwin also chairs the New Media Council for the Caucus for Producers, Writers, and Directors, and serves on the Interactive Media Peer Group for the Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences. With the deadline to nominate for year two of the Streamy Awards and to become a voting member of the IAWTV approaching, it is great to welcome also the co-founder of TubeFilter, a, a website that prints all the news that's fit for interwebs, <laughs> Drew Baldwin. Drew, thanks for coming on tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks a lot. It's, uh, it's a pleasure, especially since uh, the final hour is coming up uh, at the end of this week. So. I'm very happy to, to be on. The final hour, of course, you're referencing... Well, there's two things that's going on. The uh, certified submissions for the Streamy Awards, which we can talk a little bit about what that means, and also applications for the International Academy of Web TV, which we affectionately call the IAWTV. Now, we're going to get to all that, but I want to say it's exciting to have you on because I feel like we're, we're in the same, or part of the same family of promoting and building you know, web television. Absolutely. And, and you through, you know, the International Academy and Tube Filter and the Streamy Awards, bringing awareness, recognition to everything that's going on on the web is just fantastic. So congratulations on that. Well, thank you and congratulations to you on your anniversary. I mean, I have so much respect for you because, uh, as you know, the Streamy Awards are also completely live. Um, so uh, I can understand uh, a little bit of what it takes. So, Brian, thanks also for having me. <laughs> Appreciate it. My so, pleasure. My so, pleasure. So, so much to get to. A few different things. Let's start first with the Streamy Awards. Right. Okay. okay. So, you mentioned two ways to submit public and certified. Public is closed, certified is open till Friday. What is each? Right. So, last year, basically, what we did was public submissions. Anybody who's a fan, a producer, or just somebody in the space who thought that a show deserved to get recognition or an individual in a show. We're talking cinematographers, actors, directors, writers, best comedies, best ensemble cast. They were being submitted. Uh, last year we got uh, over 100,000 submissions that way, just kind of out of the clear blue. It was awesome. And that's uh, coming out yeah. of nowhere. Yeah, this right? was really uh, like over we, 100, we made a press release and in the 45 days we had 100,000 submissions in separate categories. It was pretty overwhelming. And it was a great, great testament to the growth in the space and that this is a serious medium that we're talking about. So this year, as you can imagine, going through that was a little bit difficult. But uh, So this year, we decided to break it up into two different sections. We have the same type of public submissions, which are very, very important because the public submissions are also integral to the nominations process. And then there are the certified submissions, which are for content owners, producers, to actually put in an official bid, so to speak, for uh, recognition. It sort of streamlines the whole thing so that all the different categories are represented um, and that there's no um, controversy, equivocation, or error because the fans sometimes can And the certified also gives you all the, the correct contact information, exactly. how to get in touch. So, you know, you're not getting this great show. Not right, same clearances. <laughs> I mean, it's a learning process, yeah. as you know, when you put a show together that uh, there's, uh, there's a lot that you can learn on your first year. So we've, we've been able to sort of streamline it so that we're gonna have a much better show this year as a result. So, and again, so the public submissions are closed and the deadline for certified is this Friday at 11.59 Friday, that, just before midnight Pacific time, which is the time of the internet. Time so of the internet. According to eBay. According to eBay. Now, there's a lot of people nominating the same shows. So with the certified, that's only gonna be a, like a one-shot deal. It's a producer or a creator submitting his or her show. Will, will they have the same consideration as, let's say, a show that was submitted thousands and thousands of times already via right. the public so submission process? In terms of consideration, it's all the same. It's the same hat that everything's going into. The only difference is with the public submissions in certain categories, generally mostly the overall series, the series that are submitted the most are going to automatically become 
final nominees for the Streaming Awards. So the Academy selects four out of the five in a category, and the public has a hand in selecting um, one of those five. One of those five. For certain categories, not for some of the craft categories or the more technical categories, but the general and overall categories, the public has a very strong say in who, in who gets selected. So for those other four out of five, though, it doesn't matter if they receive, the show that receives 2,000 nominations is not considered more than the one that receives one because you're considering it the Academy's voting based right. on the quality or Yes, nominated. the Academy is completely voting based on uh, their own internal criteria of quality. Um, the only award that's completely selected by the public is the Audience Choice Award, which is really exciting because that is actually the, the award for best web series. And last year that was presented by Lisa Kudrow. She had a very funny speech for those of you who tuned in last year. She was uh, quite a character and uh, it was basically um, the final hour was decided. We basically um, cued her with the winner like just as she walked out. That was like, it was maybe about 15 seconds before she announced it, that's when it, the winner was decided. So they were, you could vote by your, you know, through iPhone, Blackberry, mobile device, online, everything short of phone in or mail in basically. And of course, you know, with a title like Audience Choice, it kind of gives away who's determining who wins that particular award. Yeah, I know, award, exactly, you know? yeah. And you know, so again, you mentioned you put it together really quick last year, Lisa Kudrow was a presenter, I mentioned just a handful of the winners, it was at the Wadsworth Theater with over 1,300 people. Yeah. I mean, you put, it to get, you put together an amazing, you know, show yeah, into the show it, it sort of, of just fell out of the sky. I mean, I really think it's just because this was just so needed. It was like, it was time for an event like this. I mean, 2008 was a really explosive year for independent web television and studio web television. I mean, the studios got into it because uh, they didn't want to miss the boat this time. And so, you know, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a really uh, exciting year and uh, the Streaming Awards sort of were able to sort of celebrate that moment. And so it all came together very quickly and Kind of gave it a meeting success. point and a voice, if you will, yeah. to express. You said it better than I could. And the energy. Let's get to the first instant message of the evening that we have from Jutton77. How do the public submissions affect the actual nominated shows that will be announced later? Okay, so to clarify that, so essentially what we'll do is we're going to call through the, um, uh, the submissions. And um, in certain categories, like best, uh, best comedy, the most overall categories, um, those, want, those shows that are submitted most will automatically become nominees in that category without the IWTV having any say whatsoever. As long as it's eligible and it meets the criteria, um, the, the most popular submitted shows in certain categories will become finalists automatically. Um, and there's actually, um, it's very, very clearly explained on uh, the Streamies site, which is S-T-R-E-A-M-Y-S dot org, Streamies dot org. And if you go into submit, you'll see rules and eligibility. And I think also on the blog, there's a post or two about how this process works. It's a little complicated, but it actually is, works really well. Now, if it's not too inside baseball, if I'm allowed to ask this, I mean, just by comparison, a lot of people have heard of the Sundance Film Festival, whether they're filmmakers or not. Mm -hmm. And they might get, I don't know, five, 6,000 submissions you know, for, for their festival, uh, maybe 7,000, maybe I'm off, give or take 500,000, but 100,000, you know, and I, how do you go about going through all that material? How many judges, how many people are there in the academy, right. and how do you break that down? So the great thing about this, because they're public submissions, it's not like there are 100,000 um, different submissions, right? right? So right. there's, we have technologies in place that sort of organize um, the shows that are submitted by the public so that um, you know, there's, there's, it, it kind of whittles it down to a manageable amount. And then what we've created this year with the incorporation of the Academy into a nonprofit organization is now that it's a member of organization, we now have peer groups that we've set up. There's 21 different peer groups of which certain ones are dedicated just for certain fields. So there's a director's peer group, there's a cinematography peer group, there's an art direction peer group. And we're gonna, that's how we're gonna break down sort of the selection process. So that the more qualified members of the Academy are gonna be the ones that determine the winners in uh, some of those more specific categories. That's a great way to do it, sounds good. Let's get to another instant message. Let's see, we have one from Sir Flamp. Hope I'm getting that right or close Sir to Flamp. it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, in working with TubeFilter, what do you feel is the most common mistake people producing web television make? Um, the most common? I think, um, I think there's a twofold, that's a twofold question I'm going to answer. I think one of them is when people think what would be a good idea 
or they try to fit something into the box, that generally doesn't work. It usually falls flat. Um, it's usually those who are following their passion that they create something great. There's some really great shows out there, um, like Digits, for the for one comes to mind. It's about this Italian model guy who just asks girls for, for their phone numbers and gets shot down or doesn't. It's absolutely <laughs> hilarious to watch. Um, as you know, Dr. Horrible was a, you know, a big, winner, a big winner, but it really came out of a passion project. And that was really the biggest thing that was, I think, that was important about that. It was, that would never have been produced on air. And in fact, he pitched the idea all over. Uh, and then finally decided just, you know, with the writer strike, which was really instrumental, and another reason why 2008 was such a big year for web TV and independent content online. I know I had uh, James Gunn on, and he developed, I believe, the writer strike was instrumental in him following up with PG Porn. Yeah, which, I mean, how can that, uh, with a title like that, how can that be a passion <laughs> project? Right. That's, right. <laughs> that's a great one, too. And, and those are the kind of things that are going to be unique, mm -hmm. and that's the sort of thing that, you know, internet culture really picks up on and loves. Something that's very different. I mean, even Fred, in its own in his own way, was very different than the traditional video blogger. I mean, just the format and his enthusiasm. I think that's really so. I know that was kind of an oblique answer, but another thing is just um, not stopping and taking the time to approach your show with a professional attitude. A lot of um, show producers have a great idea. They shoot one episode. They throw it up. It does great, they have no follow-up. A perfect example of this um, is the website is down. The website is down was an unbelievable pilot episode that uh, unfortunately the, the guys who made it didn't realize how huge it was gonna blow up. It's absolutely hilarious about this IT guy who just like cannot deal with these idiot sales guys. <laughs> um, they finally did follow up with, uh, with an episode but it was so far late in advance it just lost all that momentum. Well, and I'm sure another thing you're noticing being so close you know, to the field and, you know, a content provider with two filter and everything, is this the game is changing so fast that the, the players, the quality of the content that's being put on there, mm -hmm. that you, you really can't get away with amateur production, maybe that you possibly could have, you know, a year or so ago. It's, it's just growing exponentially, that's the quality of the work, the competition of the work. I, I think so. I mean, I, I think, however, th that's, that's an interesting question because, um, the term amateur, with such a low barrier to publish now, amateur doesn't really mean anything anymore. Right. Um, like we, we had a meetup. We have a meetup, uh, which is like this uh, Hollywood-based event that we have once a month. Once a month, mm -hmm. right? We actually have one tomorrow um, at uh, Busby's, which is in Mid Wilshire, right around Stream headquarters. So not to get too ADD, if people want to attend this, they can go to thestreamies.org to get information. Uh, about no, you it? just go to tubefilter.tv slash meetup, or just go to tubefilter.tv and you'll click on Meetup and you can get, we have a great, it's actually Epic Foo, it's Zadi mm -hmm. Diaz and Steve right. Wolf. We do this fantastic internet culture show called Epic Foo, three years in the running, hugely successful. Coming back after a long hiatus to be followed by an open bar mixer, right? <laughs> exactly, open bar mixer. Um, we're giving away laptops from mm -hmm. HP and Intel, a dream screen, a lot of fun things. Great way to meet other content creators, producers, people doing all kinds of great things and to, of course, see the presentation first, right. but now to get back to what you were saying about well, the Well, because the, 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 the month before in December, we, uh, we did the Bannon Way, which was um, very, very high quality, independently produced web series pilot that they shot, they put all their money into a pilot, uh, and then pitched around, got repped by some agents, got hooked up with Sony, mm -hmm. Sony bought 13 episodes, now it's a studio web mm -hmm. series. And another source of controversy, too, on the interwebs, um, because of uh, the way studios are able to spend money, there's higher production value. But still, online, it's really just good storytelling, always. Yes. Always. And that actually is really hard. I mean, you have to pay a lot for good storytelling, or you have to be really talented if, if you don't have the money. And Absol that's something that's, that's, that's difficult. Yeah, I mean, if, I, if we were to put together a montage of writers, directors, actors, all the different types of people from all the different areas of film, TV, and new media, it always comes back to story. Yeah, you always. Know, story, 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 story. Are there any, as a person who has a filmmaking background himself, is there anything that you would suggest people do differently if they're making con content that is specifically intended for the web versus something else? Um, you mean in terms of like the, the quality? Uh, the, I, the way you might shoot it, the quality? I would say it would take care in your production uh, design. I think you know, a lot of web series come out of the apartment and they're not being creatively thinking that we get a lot of web series about roommates, about um, 
uh, like office because they're easy locations and they're available. But uh, we appreciate more show like The Legend of Neil, which um, got out of the apartment and into a fantastical world of a video game, which I think is really awesome. Nevertheless, like you have a director like Brett Register who will shoot in his apartment, but his stories are also crazy about you know people being werewolves or. Um, people jumping out of video games, it, it, it works. But that's a very creative thinking. I think that that really is celebrated on the web, like really weird outside of the box ideas always. Sounds good. Drink Moxie would like to ask, do you have any procedures in place to prevent people from spamming the vote? And if not, Drink Moxie, tell me how I can spam the vote. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so you mean like in terms of... Uh, to prevent like, someone from maybe overvoting. It's, I know it's, yeah, at, it's at one this, vote per day kind of thing. At this point, point right now, um, that's not going to be a problem because the public submissions are closed. During the public submissions, we monitor all the IP addresses that are coming in, and also there's some patterns that emerge. Um, last year, um, we were able to uh, locate um, like some... Uh, Bots that were able, that were trying to, to to spam, but it's so easy to see because when you look at all the submissions, they all come in the same way. It's uh, all the all the submissions are being monitored, and then we have technologies in place that prevent uh, IP, you know, like more than one IP address uh, or more than yeah one, more than IP one address vote a day, yeah right. one vote per IP address per right. day, and that's actually enforced with technology. There are other ways where. Uh, they try to get in there, but it, we haven't noticed that this year, which is great. Um, it's Sounds been actually pretty, uh, pretty tight race. So. Oh wow! So <laughs> there you go. Wow, the mysterious look there. Uh, Death DT is insisting, insisting that I ask you about your mustache. About my mustache. Yes. So apparently, Death DT knows you and uh, wants to know what the new look's all about. <laughs> uh, the mustache is uh, well. I, my birthday was in January. Yesterday. Yeah, uh, January 19th, um, so we both have a January anniversary, mm -hmm. one's my birth, the other's right. the show. Um, it just kind of evolved, uh, it was an idea, kind of a dare, kind of a challenge. It's, uh, it's interesting because it's actually a fake mustache, okay. but it's real uh -huh. because it looks like it's a long mustache, but that's actually growing out of my face. And Brady, our CEO, uh -huh. noticed that, he said, you have a real Fake a real fake mustache. Yeah, so it looks like it's a lot longer than it is. It's just a bunch of short hair. And plus, uh, it took me a long time to be able to grow facial hair. And now that you kind can, of a you're, you're kind of proud. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Thanks for the on-top of question there, Death DT. <laughs> uh, and we know who that is, so that's okay. PSI would like to ask, um, after this week, can we start to nominate for next year's awards? Wow, they haven't even announced the nominees yet. Um, no, not yet. Um, we're going to be inundated with uh, nominations. Um, so uh, I think very soon, though, we're going to want to be able to open up uh, uh, nominations for the following year. Um, but, you know, the, the actual nominations period is really kind of just started in December mm -hmm. for both years. I think that's going to be the same thing. The eligibility period, of course, is the calendar year. Um, Tube filter might have some products in play that's going to, you know, facilitate getting all that information in. So it's just a matter of like turning it on when it's time to submit. But beyond that, I can't uh, guarantee that you're going to be able to. You're just going to have to hold your wad until uh, <laughs> at least after April 11th, which is the date of the Streaming Awards. Now we, we've been talking about the Streaming Awards. Let's get back to the International Academy of Web yeah. Television because that has a similar deadline of this Friday, 11:59 Pacific Standard Time, the time of the internet. Um, <laughs> I got that memorized. Coin now. it. Uh, let's see. So yeah, now that is to become the deadline. You can apply after this Friday, eleven fifty nine. Yes. But if you wanted to potentially become a voting member of this year's streaming, right. is that so, what that deadline? Exactly. So the IWTV is accepting applications all the time, right? It's a great organization, and there's a lot more to it than just simply uh, voting in the streaming uh, streaming awards. Um, you know, it's you're part of a, a recognized professional group. Um, there's events throughout the year. Um, you're going to be part of the roster and have access to other, other other memberships. You can be involved in the governance of many of the peer groups, which include standards and practices, advertising, um, and and again, those peer groups, those are different groups having to do with different areas of the field of entertainment. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, some of it might be uh, there. There might be some a little bit of political advocacy for the for online entertainment in general. Uh, we try to stay neutral as an organization. Uh, because this is a, a, an organization primarily 
um, to recognize excellence in the medium and also um, sort of promote the space in general. Um, besides, besides that, it's, it's a rather neutral organization. Um, for the deadline that's coming up this Friday, absolutely, if you want to be involved in the voting and the, the decision making of the winners of the Streamy Awards and the Visionary Award, which is another award that we're doing, um, you have to get your application in. It's pretty straightforward. You have to be an active participant in web TV. And the way that you do that is by providing your credits and a recommendation from either a member, a current member of the IWTV, or two industry references, which is a pretty loose term. It's actually a very straightforward application. It doesn't require very much um, than just sort of a reason why you're relevant in the space. And the place to go to find that application online? Yeah, it's just, uh, it's the website of the International Academy of Web Television, which is IAWTV.org. No, I, I, I glance, your, your membership seems to be a great cross-section. I noticed um, an agent from International Creative Management, mm -hmm. uh, Justine Bateman, who has an, her own online. Yep. And uh, just producers, directors, actors, creators, it's a great cross-section of people throughout the web industry. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's uh, primarily the people who are creating the show, but also professionals in the space, like distributors and uh, agents, mm -hmm. uh, journalists, um, managers, um, and uh, some certain technologists that help facilitate this you know, ability to share your, your um, creation with the world. So it's a really great cross-section. But So for someone who is involved in web entertainment, it's a great opportunity to be a part of a, a, ne a networking community, an yeah. advocacy community, um, go to great events to meet and mingle and network. Mm -hmm. And the recognition. I mean, it's an honor. It's, it's, um, to be accepted. To be accepted, right. yeah. And it's also, it's important for this sort of recognition of space because there's such extraordinary work doing, being done. So as a member, it's, uh, it's, it's important to be recognized um, as a professional in this space. And the Stream Awards in itself are helping to bring this Give space that recognition, up. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, it's amazing just to go back a couple of years for, just from my perspective of working with Brian Grandma on the stream and it starting in his bedroom and a year after that and a year after that and from your guys' from Tube Filter to the concept of the streamies to actually doing it to now this year compared to last, it's just growing so fast. It's a great thing to be a part of, mm -hmm. you know. OMG Crayons, I have an idea for a web series. How long do you recommend the length of each episode be? So that's another kind of recommendation on content. Yeah, that's question. really interesting. Um, do you find that shows are a certain length and what length do you recommend? Yeah, well it's interesting because um, the way the technology has evolved, this series had to be short. Um, there's a number of reasons. Budget has to do with that. Um, the technology about, you know, you, you couldn't post longer than a few minutes, ten minutes. Now it's a lot more easy to, uh, to, to post uh, longer episodes. However, the, the audience has been habituated to, to short content. A lot of content's consumed while you're at work, while your boss isn't looking, you know. <laughs> right. um, that, those short little like snack sized bursts, but now we're seeing longer and longer pieces of content. Um, there's you know, up to 15 minutes. It really depends, um, you know, producing longer shows, and I hate the word content actually. I always talk about, sorry to digress, but it's like, at a winery, they don't start with the bottles and go, okay, I'll do just fill these things up and right. get them sold. Right. I mean, you work, you work with the wine right. first. So right. I like to call it, you know, shows or properties or stories. Right. Um, anyways, sorry to digress. That's okay. uh, what was I talking about? Well, we were oh, talking yeah, so about like, ideal story length. Yeah, so I, it really depends on what's appropriate for the story. You know, sometimes it's just a quick little 30 second vignette. Sometimes it takes 15 minutes, like an episode of Dr. Horrible. Sometimes it takes 10 minutes. I noticed that. Um, a lot, the longer it gets, a little more tedious it is to watch. So you have to really make sure that it's captivating. And there's always room to cut it shorter. There's always room. Like I think uh, one of the common mistakes for first time producers in the space and directors is uh, a little too much indulgence. Mm -hmm. It's not a cinematic space. So there's not, you don't have the, the scope to just sit with it like when you're watching, I don't know, a 3D movie mm -hmm. in a huge screen. These are, you know, Generally, I mean, thanks to Boxy and some other technologies like uh, Roku, you, you can now start watching um, web TV on your big plasma home screen, which is awesome. So Boxy, 
for the audience who might not be aware, you, there was just an article on TubeFilter. Yeah, check it out. If, if you're interested about Voxy, that's a great uh, technology that's allowing you to watch all your embedded web content on your TV and more. They've actually started uh, doing some really interesting things. Is it, is it a wireless deal, or do you have to? Um, the the actual technology. The boxy? I don't know. We don't we don't have it yet. Okay. We have Roku, and, and thanks to Dina Kaplan and the folks over at Blip, they gave us a really nice Christmas present. You can actually watch last year's streaming awards on your TV through Roku, which is amazing. I've talked to some folks over in the Bay Area. Apparently, none of them use cable. They all just jail, like jailbreak their. <laughs> Between Apple TV, Roku, and Boxy, they can watch anything basically, which is kind of neat. So yeah, go to Two Filter to read this article on Boxy. Yeah, it's, it's, right, yeah, it's right on. It's right on the. Uh, I think it's on the front page of Two Filter. A couple posts back. So just to kind of finish up that question about length, then. Sorry. I, and that's okay. No, this is great stuff. Uh, that's what I'm here for to try to you know, um, focus on the story. Be true to the story, but keep in mind it is the internet, not a movie theater. Right. Um, I think you know one thing. For now. For, for now, now. For now. now. Until Boxy, right? Um, one thing I'm experimenting with is I'm putting together a project that I'm submitting to festivals as a short film mm -hmm. at about 15 or 16 minutes in length, but I'm going to chop it up into five webisodes for the internet because of you know kind of what you were just talking about. Right. So that's maybe another thing to think about. Um, yeah, actually, that's that's a great idea. Like the, these these folks who did the Bannon Way, they really originally conceived of it as a short film. But then they saw the opportunity to serialize it. And they, they should change the story a little bit to accommodate right. that, but um, it makes it easier to consume. And I think also, just to make this point, because you're your own boss when you're doing this, and you don't have someone else hounding you, you don't have a studio, you cannot afford to be indulgent. And you have the opportunity to be. And I see a lot of um, series where there's a little bit too much indulgence, and you, and you alienate yourself from your viewers who are trying to consume what you're making in the midst of like Facebook posts and IMs and email. And, and so if you want to, you just want to be able to capture attention, make sure that, you're, that what you're making is really rich and thick and that you're, you're getting to the point. Um, so that's, I think that's some advice that well, you know, I pass along. That is excellent advice and I'm glad you made it twice <laughs> because it, it really is very strong. Edit, 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 chop down, chop down, chop down. Um, if you can't afford quote unquote professional feedback, whether it be on the script, you know, at the script stage of it, get feedback from your friends, show it to a bunch of people, and tell them not to talk to each other. And if they're all giving you the same feedback, give that a lot of weight. Yeah. You know? And then, you know, take their advice and then decide whether you take it or not. Exactly. Because ultimately, you're doing this for yourself. So yes. um, I think that's another thing when I said earlier is that when you're trying to create something that's going to be successful or for a perceived audience, or what you've perceived to be successful, it usually doesn't doesn't have that smack of originality, which is what really just ignites viewership. I think it's kind of ironic, though. It's that dance. It's that fine line between being passionate, true to yourself, not doing it because you're trying to guess what the audience wants, but then the the non self indulgent thing mm -hmm. and, and not letting it run too long. Yep. It, and, and that's part of the art. That's part of the art of being a, a creative person and knowing how to um, walk that line, if you will. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Bundy would like to ask or state these streamies is it just f for edited web series or is it also for like live shows similar to this one <laughs> great great question Bundy um, this this year we added several different categories about 12 different categories we modified a few definitely check out the uh, the streamies blog at streamies.org and just click on blog and we talked about some of the new categories which include live Still the same three episode requirements, so the Streamy Awards can't be considered for live right. category, though. We, we're really proud of it. Um, but yeah, there's been a lot of submissions, um, especially from the stream.tv. I'm, I'm really, really, really excited. Um, you know, live, live uh, series, we have a great appreciation from that, having done it ourselves. Um, it's awesome. So um, it definitely deserved recognition, and so we do have a live category. And live shows can be considered for all other different categories, like hosted or news or um, any of the non-scripted categories. Um, or if it's live fiction, I mean, then it can be considered there for comedy yeah, or drama. I right. mean, it really is just, there was a specific category created for live because of its particular difficulty and uh, unique uniqueness. And, but then live shows can be considered alongside any of the other pre-taped um, shows. Now, before we came on, was there a vlogger category that you added this year that you wanted yes, to talk about? Yes, there's a vlogger category. Um, we decided to expand uh, our reach uh, or our, sort of our scope to 
include also uh, for professional vloggers because of really the explosion this last year in, in some of the really great stories that have been told through vloggers. And uh, we also think that, you know, um, our previous categories somewhat alienated YouTube uh, and its audience, um, which is, but there's, there's some really great things that are being produced and uh, we wanted to be inclusive, inclusive of that, you know. So a show like Fred, for example, is now going to be eligible um, because it's a serialized, professional, and very unique um, to the web type of uh, production. Fantastic. So we're looking forward to that. There's a couple other n really in interesting categories. Let's hear like, them. Uh, branded entertainment. Yeah. Uh, we had this thing called uh, ad integration, which uh -huh. really doesn't make sense. Right. Um, the Sklar brothers had a really funny little speech on that. They were really great. Um, they won for Skype uh, in Back on Tops, which is like that Eisner. Uh, you know, Michael Eisner bought Tops and then right. created a web series. And that's another way of doing a successful web series. Buy a huge company. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then get the Scholar Brothers to work on it. Um, the, uh, the branded entertainment category, there's this, this, this sort of particular type of um, show that's on the internet, which is brand centric or like caters to a brand or puts forth a brand message. It's actually very important because there's some really great shows that come out of it. There's some shows that are just clearly advertising and the audience, you know, reje rejects it. Um, and then there was also uh, product integration, which is uh, a different one. And then we had this thing called companion series, which I think is the most interesting one. Essentially, um, what a companion series is, it's a type of derivative series that is sort of required requires the viewer to have seen like the series that it was a part of. So a great example of, of so this. So some sort of spin-off of a television? Yeah, it's a spin-off. Yeah. Like, for example, Battlestar Galactica like, killed the drama category last year. But a lot of, uh, you couldn't just watch that, that the BSG face of the enemy without understanding the greater context of Battlestar Galactica, which means you would have had to watch it on TV. So it was very clearly this type of derivative series, which is a companion series. Like The Office does things like this, Heroes does something like this, where right. the characters come from a different show, and you need to be able to watch that show and to understand this. Um, so the, the companion series sort of set, uh, are set aside from the sort of purely original Shows, I think yeah. it's great that they get their own category, one to, to acknowledge them and their fans, but also not to potentially take away from you know, those people well, that don't have Well, it's a much that. bigger challenge to uh, create something from scratch than to right. like, siphon off of some of the marketing and uh, momentum that's, that's coming off of uh, you know, a show that's heavily marketed, right. like NBC, for example. Right. Nevertheless, like, ultimately, what the IEWTV is doing is judging the best shows, and they're holding them equally accountable, whether they're coming from like a multi-million dollar, uh, billion dollar studio or just, you know, somebody who's doing something out of his bedroom. We're taking that all into account, you know, without any prejudice with regards to provenance, which I think is really what makes it great. And that's why, like last year, we had this very interesting outpouring of like web stars, people that were never even recognized before. And then like A-list or high level celebrities sure. like Neil Patrick Harris who flew in even though his publicist said, uh, I don't think that's gonna, gonna work, because he, uh, he really saw the passion for the place. I mean, Joss Whedon was great, it was a great, great speech. And then Felicia Day, who really came up through the web, also was equally on, on equal footing. Love the Guild, and she had, I think, maybe the line of the night, when in line her, of the night. When she was in her, so awesome. in her acceptance speech, talking yeah. about um, this is to celebrate people not waiting for permission right. to, to do their art. Yeah, exactly. You know, just, I thought it was awesome. She was, she really like, yeah, she, she got a standing ovation after that speech. It was really awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've got a lot of IMs lining up for oh, you. Oh, really? So okay, let's, good. Let's Sorry, I don't want to. No, it's okay. This is all great stuff. Crazy Vase, who was the first person to want to do a Streamy Awards show, and how hard was it to do the first show? So is it you and your partner sitting around doing whatever it is you're doing? Someone says, hey, let's do a Streamy show. Well, we just knew that, like, this, there, this was the time to do it. Um, there was... When we started TubeFilter, uh, we wanted to bring up the space and celebrate the space and organize it and get an idea of, of this rapidly emerging creative entertainment space. And so it was just a natural evolution out of that to do an awards show. The awards show that we cr came up with was nothing that we really envisioned. It was actually not, as it, we weren't being as ambitious, but as we started gaining momentum moving towards the, uh, the show date, just things started falling out of the sky. It was started becoming, you know, it started building its own momentum, and it became 
uh, a, a huge undertaking. It now, was it was great. Now, when you say things falling out of the sky, I mean, did you get sponsors? I mean, you were at yeah, a, we you got got a great huge sponsor. 1300 seat theater. How did all that come together? Yeah, I mean, it, like, uh, uh, we were very fortunate early on to have the Writers Guild of America um, come in and offer their theater um, for uh, for the awards early on. It was a really great endorsement from a you know a, a veteran. Hollywood organization like the Writers Guild, who of course were very invested in the space because of the strike and empowering writers, which I think the internet does very well. Um, they let us use their theater, which had maybe four or five hundred seats, and everything was great until we started outgrowing it. And uh, then we, you know, we got uh, Gary Smith, who's uh, like a, a multiple Emmy award-winning uh, director and producer of the Tonys and the Emmys. He came on board to help us out. We um, got some of the biggest names in, in event production, like PRG, donated all their lighting directors and lighting. Um, and we just had a great support from, from talent to volunteers to studios to independent creators. Everyone just really came together and saw this as an just awesome moment. And then the, the sponsors came through for us. It was really great. And how did the press respond to you? Press was great. <laughs> we got coverage that I couldn't believe. Uh, we were covering the New York Times, USA Today, Variety. We were on the news. Um, it was, uh, and there were all great reviews. You know, it's like it was great to. See, one of the quotes, like it was great to see, um, you know, like traditional Hollywood types rubbing shoulders with um, uh, folks who you've never heard of. That were, you know, they were both equally psyched to be together. With Italian guy who gets turned down by women. You know? Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. You know? I mean, it was, it was, it was like, yeah, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was really just a kind of a magical uh, evening. You know, it's and it's only going to get better. That's absolutely really, that's what we're excited about. Well, what's interesting is is to watch its growth from year to year because you know it's going to be exponential. It's fantastic. Drink Moxie would like to ask: Are you worried as more and more web series get funded by companies that they will be censored, much like TV programs? That's an interesting question. Um, the great thing about the internet, though, right now, with net neutrality, of course, which is something that we can't take for granted. No, we did a big show with that. We did have the past WGA president, Patrick Verone. Oh, yeah. Uh, we devoted a whole show to that. Good. Well, it's, uh, you know, so as of now, which is something, again, we can't take for granted. We cannot take it for granted. But uh, there's always going to be, uh, you know, an, an open ear to independent content. And like I said at the very beginning, it's about story anyways and about thinking in new ways. So um, when you start censoring yourself and in, 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 in moving with fear, you're, it's going to be self-destructive anyways. I mean, we've seen that with TV. I mean, that's why there's so much content being produced online. It's not simply just because it's easy to do. It's also because there's a need for it, right? I mean, producing content is one half of it. The other half is there's, a, there's an audience out there that's looking for refreshing stories and storytelling. And uh, I think that's never going to go away, so long as the internet's open and free. Um, so that's, that's the one thing that I'd be worried about. Um, yeah, I think when sponsors get involved, they, have, they, ha they can't be as risky. And that's, um, as, a, as a producer and a creator, that's a compromise that you have to, you have to deal with. And that was something that we talked about at our last meetup with uh, the band and way who were working with Sony about what limitations they had working with the studio, but also balancing off by what kind of great opportunities they had. I mean, they got to blow up a car. I think that's pretty awesome. I Absolutely. don't think I don't think I'd be able to do that myself. Well, maybe I don't know. But I think one take. <laughs> one take. That's it. That's it. <laughs> one take. Hope my my parents come back from vacation. I don't know. Something like that. Uh, let's see, for those of you interested in learning more about net neutrality, do go to the stream.tv forward slash filmnut and look up my interview with Patrick Verone. Very informative hour on that particular topic. Starving fan, Drew, what did you think about David Faustino's F Faustino's For Your Consideration video? Um, I loved it. First of all, I just think it was great that when, when people do, when do things like this, I've seen so many great uh, For Your Consideration. One of my favorites is uh, for The Battery Is Down. They did uh, a Christmas, All I Want for Christmas is a Streamy. <laughs> she like throws away Oscars and Emmys and Golden Globes. It's awesome. And it's all sung. It's all musical. It's very gleeful. Uh, great um, sort of tribute to the Streamy Awards and also right. just fantastic for your consideration. And that was something that moved quickly and caught your attention the whole time. 
Faustino's was... Um, now, for those of you who don't know, David Faustino uh, played Bud Bundy on Married with Children, and he now has a reality show, or not, it's, it's a show. It's a show. Where, where he kind of yeah. parodies himself, he plays himself. And, yeah, I mean, and, he uh, it's basically loosely based, or not loosely based, upon his life after as Married with Children. Yeah. As, uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an actor, um, it's called Starving, so I think you can imagine how well, you know, how what it's about <laughs> and it's about him and his uh, friend who's you know Parker Lewis can't eat, can't lose um, and apparently like he says he did lose <laughs> and uh, they're they're kind of an odd couple and it, it's really it's it's a great and show very raunchy very raunchy and that's uh, part of uh, its charm I think and he did this fun for your consideration yeah he sort of he sort of said I'll you know I'm gonna kill this dog if you uh, <laughs> if you don't vote for me <laughs> I mean it's it's great I mean I'm glad he did it I think that's great and he kind of I remember he was on the phone with Mark, and he's like, uh, you know, what can I do? He's like, well, just go ahead and do something. Do something great. He's like, okay, I got it. So, um, what, was it controversial? I don't know. I don't. I don't know how it was perceived, but right. I just was flattered that he did something, and also just thought that was um, proactive of him. And anytime anyone's proactive online, I, I celebrate that. Love the creativity of the net. Bo would like to ask: uh, Will the retweet votes count, or just on the streamy site submissions? So the uh, it's interesting. I think a lot of uh, people out there think that the Twitter is a, is a way to vote. It isn't. It's actually only through the public submissions, and those sort of um, push out a tweet, uh, or you have the option to tweet. And what that where that we only created that to sort of help just build momentum and and conversation to make, to make it easy for people yeah. to spread the word for themselves once so they vote. So the tweeting actually doesn't. Uh, uh, count as a, as, a, as a submission, an actual submission on site. We actually made that very clear because we didn't want any third party sites or any spamming to, to come through because um, we wanted to make sure that all the uh, submissions came through the site so that we could monitor absolutely everything. Once you did that, then you had the opportunity to tweet it out so that your friends would know that you're voting and they could be reminded to vote and we wanted to build some momentum, which I think was really successful because we've gotten about 5,000 submissions every day since we opened submissions. And you were, you, on average. you hit some high ranking on Twitter or something in terms of relevance? Yeah, we, relevance? we hit like uh, all top, I think, top 100 yeah. sites. Twitter. Uh -huh. We had 14,000 mentions in, in the last month or so. Yeah. Which is awesome. Right. Thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you. But I mean, like, that's, it's not us, it's, every, it's all right. of us. I mean, this is the industry. I mean, I think that's, what, that's what's really important here. Woozle, how many hours a week do you watch screen web material? It seems like you have a lot of stuff to go through. Yeah, there's quite a bit, and of course, in the next coming weeks, it's going to be a lot. It's your tax season. If you were an accountant, this would be your yeah, exactly <laughs> your busy time of year. Yeah, there's just quite a bit. I mean, we love this. We love it. So it's it's. Now you mentioned that the peer groups and, and they'll pay attention to the areas of their expertise. Mm -hmm. Are you involved in any of the particular areas yourself, or is that all? farmed out to other members in the different peer groups? Um, you know, I don't know uh, what I can disclose about the composition of the peer sure, groups, so, um, but I do know that, uh, um, you know, the right people end up in the right places. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's basically how, how it works. And I don't remember if we talked about this before or during the show, the, the, it's a way of cutting up this massive undertaking, which is right. reviewing all this. It's, it's so that um, if, you know, if you're a cinematographer, then you're more qualified to judge cinematography than uh, you know, somewhat in, in music, for example. Now, in October, uh, Two Filter acquired uh, Tilzy.tv. Yes, is that correct? Yeah. And that was for what purpose, and what do they add to your collective? Uh, well, Tilzy, you know, they've been around for a little bit longer than us. Um, they're based out of New York, um, and uh, they were, you know, they were. We worked together with them during the Streamy Awards as co-hosts and really enjoyed working with one another and it just seemed like a natural evolution. Now, um, Tube Filter is now bi-coastal um, and uh, we were able to expand our portfolio and uh, products and uh, we really um, rely on, on, on the folks over there as part of the Tube Filter team now. So um, I don't know what more I can say about the, the acquisition, but we know everyone wanted that. Great, and it sounds like it's just um, it's just a bigger and broader way of doing what you already do, just better and more efficiently, and bi coastal and that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Great, yummies. What type of shows or what categories do you get the most submissions for? What type of shows and what categories? So do you get more comedies? Let's yeah, say. Yeah, I mean, you know, comedies again, like because of uh, production value. Uh, if we, you know, it's funny. There's a lot more dramas this year, which I think is great. Uh, but you know, comedy is just like a powerhouse because. Um, 
it, it's more about writing, right? So you don't have to, we don't require as much production uh, in, in a comedy because comedy is more raw and you know, you can just have two people chatting and it could be hilarious. Um, with drama, it, sometimes, you know, we've been conditioned to a little more production, a little more editing, a little more set action, things like that, music, you know, there's a lot. Uh, so it's, it's a little harder to do that. But uh, yeah, comedy's, comedy's big. Everybody loves Raymond. Their kitchen, their parents' kitchen. <laughs> their Done. kitchen, the right. living room, you know, the kitchen, the other kitchen. You yeah, know? now try a show like 24. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of But location. by and large then, so comedy's the most? Yeah, comedy, yeah. But I, there's been such a big now you said you upswing have... in, in drama too because technology has enabled, uh, it's lowered the cost uh, to, to produce awesome stuff. I mean, like, um, right. now you can, get a professional looking camera, like editing techniques, um, visual effects are easier to do. There's more of a community and network of uh, professionals in the space so you can know where to go to. The people have track records now, so um, there's, you, you can build a team better. I mean, there's a, a great uh, show called Compulsions, which uh, was written by Bernie Sue, uh, who's uh, been you know, very closely involved uh, with the tube filter scene uh, from the very beginning and he decided to go with the drama and did a great job um, pulling it together. Um, How are the new categories doing? Are they getting a lot of submissions as well? Well, I haven't checked into that because uh, we, uh, we haven't yet sort of like uh, broken the seal in there, in, in there but um, we're looking forward to see, um, you know, how our new categories did. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they were, they were pretty heavily represented. Though I can't say what numbers they are because also those numbers are part of uh, the nominations process so oh. it's a it's it's sanct it's a sanctified area fair enough bottom the streamies are web exclusive with the influence of the net growing every day do you see it becoming a legitimate award alongside the emmy one day it's legitimate now what are you talking about someday <laughs> uh, I, I think i understand your point i mean it is definitely a legitimate award uh, by all by all accounts and criteria um, in terms of our relationship with other award show, I think we're in a unique position to set ourselves apart from a lot of these other shows because we're dealing with this such a dynamic and exciting medium and it's fresh and it's new, it's intimidating to old Hollywood and it's inspiring to young uh, creatives. Um, it's, uh, but we, from the very beginning, we, uh, we created this uh, concept around a very professional uh, perspective, you know, and I feel like, you know, it's up to everyone to step up. You know, we created an, a, an academy that mimics m many of the other uh, professional academies in film and television. Um, it's a nonprofit organization, uh, member run. Uh, we have uh, the trophy, everything we put all thought into to, uh, to make sure that this was well, a real legitimate award, not some payola or you know, shell organization. And you can go online and you can see the year one or highlights from it at least yep. anyway, from, of the streaming awards and, and you can see just how professional it was handled last year. And you know what actually, well, we tried. Uh, you, tr you did well and it reminds me a little bit, the streamies remind me a little bit in a way similar but different uh, of the ESPYs because the ESPYs, it's, to me it seems like yesterday there was year one and it, it just grew so much so fast mm -hmm. and now you know, ESPN awards for athletes it's it's an established you know award so that with lots of credibility and respect. Well, we're hoping uh, you know we, we it's interesting because um, web television might become a, a sort of a redundant term, right? Might right. Become obsolete. Like I think um, as a publishing platform, it's going to be very interesting to see how it develops and and how traditional TV and the limitations it has. Um, will help or, or hurt it. I mean, some of the limitations of traditional television help it survive because there's not this um, paradox of choice, right? There, it's, it's scheduled, it's, there's limited choice. On the, on the internet, it, it sometimes becomes overwhelming with what you need to do, and that's part of what the Streamy Awards attempts to do and well is sort of focus and, and whittle down the best so that new users or new viewers can can get a, a taste of the best right off the bat without having to be inundated with 
thousands and thousands of pages and offer, you know, YouTube, it's hard to like just surf YouTube, right. you know? Well, I tell you, the next time we have you on, I want to ask you more about the TV and internet merger, but I want to get to a few more IMs before oh, sure. we get to get out of here. Uh, website guy, I am not in LA. Is it worth flying out to attend a tube filter web meetup? Um, I'd say absolutely. Yeah, we had a, a fellow um, come in from Texas just because he wanted to attend. Um, as you know, you can see the the panel part of um, uh, the tube filter meetup, the Hollywood Web Television meetup on Stickcam, um, uh, which is uh, has been sort of broadcasting the the last couple of uh, of the events. So that's stickcam.com, and um, you can. Uh, but if you want to be able to be eligible to win any of the prizes, and then also take advantage of the extraordinary networking opportunity, which is. It's funny because and it as, is extraordinary. As, I, as, I went to oh, one yeah? recently. Yeah. And oh yeah, like deals get done all the time. Yeah. It's great. I mean, there's something about meeting people face to face. It's so funny. I met you know uh, Eventbrite, which is uh, our ticketing partner. Mm -hmm. I just met with the president and co-founder, um, who uh, she talked. You know, we talked about how it's interesting how like with uh, all these social media tools available, which really give us the opportunity to eliminate the idea of geography. Mm -hmm. It's still really important to like meet people face to face. It's really important. It's important for sponsors. It's important for um, uh, partnerships, trust. I think it has to, you know, ties in also to like why live television or live online television is so effective because there's something about the immediacy of an event happening right now and uh, that uh, that's really important. Yeah, as a human to, being, I think. I happened to meet uh, Sean Becker of the Guild oh, yeah. there when I went and had him as a guest on the show very shortly thereafter. Bam. It was great to meet him. Absolutely great, extraordinary networking event. Now, I'm going to do a little improv here on the fly because one question that we like to get people out of here on oh. is asking them what their favorite set speak term is, but... Set speak? Yeah, like, you know, on a film set or a TV set, you know, back to one, that sort of thing. But I want to change it. I want to ask oh. you, since you're a web guy, since you're an interweb guy, do you have a favorite techie web term that you guys throw around the office? Well, there's, techno? One, there's one thing. Uh, there's one thing. Like we, uh, someone always gets blamed for killing the internet. I don't know. For some reason, today I think on account of the rain, there's like really bad weather here in LA. For those of you that, that don't know, it's like it happens. They shut down schools because of rain in right. LA, just because that's how we are. Um, Somehow, like the rain makes the internet go slow. I don't know what it is. So we're always like yelling at each other. Are you uploading something? Are you? Um, I'm trying to think of a set speak. I do know I love the word half apple. Okay. I love it. But uh, in terms of internet, um, well, we'll go with half apple. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think if there's like a more. I don't even know if there is one. It was just I thought maybe I'll change the question around for you. You know, ask it in the in net. Is there a net terminology? Um, um, yeah, I, I think uh, like uh, Tweeple maybe. Tweeple. <laughs> uh, I sure can't take credit for that. Thank you, Brian Grammo. <laughs> well, I mean, time of the internet, I think, is uh, a phrase that I'm going to start using. Fair enough. Now, I want to get out there one last website. I know we got uh, plenty of links out during the interview, but for these meetups, if you can't make tomorrow night's one, you can track them by the website, but also Facebook. What's is there a Facebook? Um, yeah, it's Hollywood Web Television Meetup. A Facebook. There's a fan page and a group. The group's actually bigger. Okay. So I would say go there. Definitely join that. Join if you want to join all the Facebook groups. It's, it's a great way for us to great get way. information out. Yeah, get information out to you for the next meetup. So obviously, if you can't make this one short notice, well, thank you for coming in the day after your birthday. Oh, well, thank you very much. Absolute pleasure meeting you. And the nominations are going to be announced when. The nominations will be announced sometime in February. Mid -February. So, sometime in February, and the actual streaming awards part de is? April 11th. April 11th, and you can watch it on? Uh, Streamies.org. Streamies.org. That is going to do it for our first interview of 2010. Well, thank you thank so much, you. sir. Wow, we ran out of time so quickly. Thanks a lot. Thank you all out there listening, and if you have any questions, uh, always feel free to contact us at tubefilter.tv. You can go on the site and hit up any of us. We're friendly. There you go. That is going to do it for this edition of Film Nut. Thank you so much for all the questions. Sorry we could not get to all of them. And we will see you next time on Film Nut.